Hi there, and welcome to the screencast on efficiency. This is a screencast and a series of screencasts for IB Physics Topic 2, which is about mechanics. So what does it mean to be efficient when you're efficient at something? If I were to ask my students that, I'd get things like, oh, it's how good you are or um, how much you can make do with what you got. Turns out that's a pretty good definition, starting point for defining efficiency. Right. So when we have an energy transformation, Right? Energy is always conserved. It's accounted for somehow. But not all that transformed energy is useful. It's not transformed as we want. So for an example, we have the invention of the light bulb. Right? We have electrical energy coming in, and that's transformed into light energy. But it's also, some of it's transformed into heat. So we have here a lot of energy, in this case, transformed into heat. But we want light. So not all this energy, 500, is really, we're going to consider, uh, useful. So we're going to define efficiency as a ratio. It's what comes out divided by what you put in. Now, in terms of, let's talk about units here. What would units have? Well, if you have something on top and that same sort of quantity on the bottom, you don't get any units. It's dimensionless. Right, so it's unitless. It's just a number, just a ratio. It can be expressed as a decimal or a percent. In terms of work and energy, right, it could be like the ratio of works. Like we have some kind of work out over some kind of work in. This is common for defining the efficiency of a machine. Or we can define it, as, since work and energy are really synonymous, right, we can have how much the energy changes in a system divided by how much work you put into it. Right, that could also define our efficiency. So let's take our lamp example here. Right, so if we have 500 of joules of energy coming in, we get 75 joules of light energy coming out. What's that efficiency? Well, this is what we want. And so this is the output. Here's our input. So let's take that ratio, output to input. It's 0.15 or 15% efficient. Let's try a different type of lamp, one of these spiral fluorescents. If we look at, say, we put 100 joules of energy in, electrical energy, and we get 75 joules of light energy out with only 25 going to heat. Right? If you've ever touched these, they don't get that hot. The efficiency, efficiency in this case is 75 over 100 or 75%. Right? So we get more light out per electrical energy in. Al seems to like that. Let's talk about our skydiver. Remember the skydiver jumping out of the airplane? Right. We had conversions from gravitational potential to, to kinetic. And I think if we, if we ignored air resistance and our other problem, uh, we ended up getting like, you know, it was going like 240 meters per second, something like that, when it was at the bottom after a three kilometer fall. But in this case, there is air resistance, and the terminal velocity is 50 meters per second. We want to know, so what's, how's the efficiency of this transformation? So if you want to try and calculate this, pause your video. Okay, well, we can define the efficiency here as how much kinetic energy we get out divided by how much gravitational potential energy we began with, we put in. Well, we can define, define kinetic this way, gravitational potential this way. Right? Notice the masses cancel. And if we put in some values here, all right, one half times v squared, and here we have gh, and we solve that. So we simplify, we get four percent. So the efficiency is four percent. So a lot of that energy, a lot of this gravitational potential energy, goes into you know, moving the air or warming up the air. Remember uh, Evelyn pushing her car. Remember she did six kilojoules of work pushing her car to the service station, wherever it was. Here, right, she gets it up from rest to a maximum speed of 2 meters per second on a flat road. How efficient was she? So if you want to try and solve this, go ahead and pause your video. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. The car's final kinetic energy is given by 1 half mv squared. All right, so we have 1 half mv squared. Plug in the numbers, we get 4 kilojoules of kinetic energy. Well, she put six kilojoules of energy in. So our output over our input, we get four over six, which is two thirds or 67%. Okay, that's the uh, end of our screencast on efficiency. Bye.